calm is as strong as a spell. I'll never tell. Yeah, I like you, that's for sure. Hi guys, welcome back to Exmo Lex. So recently I saw a post on Facebook that's gotten quite a bit of attention. It was written by a Mormon who is making the argument that church culture is terrible, but the church itself is ultimately good. As I read through the post, I saw a lot of glaring problems, and since the post garnered quite a bit of attention, I decided I would make a response. And I've decided not to share the person's name just to protect their privacy because this is absolutely not an attack on them, and I don't want anybody to go and be rude to them. I just want to share a differing viewpoint as somebody who once tried really hard to make the church's inconsistencies make sense in my head. So let's read through the post together and I'll interject my own thoughts as we go. I hate Mormon culture and I love being a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. How are they different? Now this person is going to share what they label as Mormon culture versus actual doctrine. Each point they share that's labeled as actual doctrine is either a quote from an apostle or a scripture verse, so I'll be doing the same thing in my response. Mormon culture, I can't believe she would wear that, so immodest. Or she has tattoos, she must be falling away. Actual doctrine, 3 Nephi 14, and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast the mote out of thy brother's eye. So this person sees hypocrisy in judging someone because of immodest clothing or tattoos, and they share a scripture condemning judgment and hypocrisy. But why would there be a culture of judging immodest clothing and tattoos in the first place. Did the members just make that up or did they learn it? Let's see what the church has said about modesty and tattoos. On modesty, J. Reuben Clark, first counselor in the first presidency of the church. The Lord is not pleased with nakedness. I am sure you girls do not appreciate, you young people, and it may not be the older ones, that the nudity which your fashions now sanction and indeed call for has its origin in those minds which seek to so clothe you that you may appeal to the baser passions of men. And if so clothed, you shall be assaulted. Take at least part of the blame to yourselves. Could this culture of judgment that you reference come from the fact that the leaders are shaming women for their clothing choices or even blaming them if they are assaulted? What about tattoos? Prophet Gordon B. Hinckley, it is sad and regrettable that some young men and women have their bodies tattooed. What do they hope to gain by this painful process? Is there anything virtuous, lovely, or of good report or praiseworthy in having unseemly so-called art and impregnated onto the skin to be carried throughout life all the way down to old age and death, they must be counseled to shun it. They must be warned to avoid it. The time will come that they will regret it, but will have no escape from the constant reminder of their foolishness except through another costly and painful procedure. So could the culture of judgment surrounding tattoos have come from the leaders who called tattooed people foolish, unseemly, and full of regret? Let's keep reading the post. Mormon culture, be exactly obedient, brother. The Lord will love you more if you are perfectly obedient. Actual doctrine, Elder Holland, my brothers and sisters, except for Jesus, there have been no flawless performances on this earthly journey we are pursuing. So while in mortality, let's strive for steady improvement without obsessing over what behavioral scientists call toxic perfectionism. Elder Christofferson, God's love is all embracing. So this person clearly believes in a God who loves everyone equally, regardless of their flaws. They obviously see the problem with huge emphasis being placed on obedience and perfection, and they share quotes to back that up. But what else has the church taught? Current prophet Russell M. Nelson, teach of faith to keep all the commandments of God, knowing that they are given to bless his children and bring them joy. Warn them that they will encounter people who pick which commandments they will keep and ignore others that they choose to break. I call this the cafeteria approach to obedience. This practice of picking and choosing will not work. It will lead to misery. To prepare to meet God, one keeps all of his commandments. John 15:10. if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. This feels like conditional love. If you obey, then you'll have my love. Is it possible that this culture of exact obedience and toxic perfectionism arose from the church itself, not just from the people? Mormon culture, in this case talking about missions, serving less or not serving at all than two years or 18 months should be shamed. Actual doctrine, DNC 71.3, verily this is a mission for a season which I give unto you. So this person disagrees with the shaming and shunning that often happens when somebody decides not to serve a mission or when they come home early. 
But what else has the church taught about missionary service? Prophet Thomas S. Monson, every worthy, able young man should prepare to serve a mission. Missionary service is a priesthood duty, an obligation the Lord expects of us who have been given so very much. Young men, I admonish you to prepare for service as a missionary. Apostle Richard G. Scott, the process begins in the home long before missionary age when parents instill in the minds and hearts of every young boy the concept of when I go on a mission, not if I go on a mission. He went on to say, you will never regret serving a mission, but most probably you will regret not serving if that is your choice. So perhaps the guilt and shame surrounding not serving a mission was caused by the church teaching that young men are obligated to go on a mission. Perhaps members shame each other for not serving because they were taught that not serving a mission meant that you were neglecting a sacred responsibility from God. You get my point? There are so many cultural beliefs, expectations, judgments, etc. that have zero doctrinal validity. The culture of judgment, shaming, and toxic perfectionism is dated, and that is not the gospel. Do you get my point? There are so many prophets, apostles, scriptures, etc., that have varying opinions and beliefs that they inconsistently share over the pulpit. The culture of judgment, shaming, and toxic perfectionism is dated, but it is also still published proudly on the church's website as gospel. Using religion as the validation for attacking people and families, or through shaming and hating, or through taking away rights is not the pure love of Christ. Picking and choosing which apostles to listen to, which scriptures to listen to, and when begets varying viewpoints within the same church. And the leadership roulette is real. Attacking people, shaming, hating, taking away rights, none of that is good, none of that is Christ-like, I agree. But all of it has been taught at one point or another by a church that is governed by mere men. The doctrine versus culture argument is easily refuted by the same sources used to start the argument. The apostles are inconsistent. The church is inconsistent. I sincerely applaud this person for their desire to be a good, kind, non-judgmental human being. I'm not saying I disagree with their effort. I'm just saying I disagree with the argument they're making on behalf of the church. This person is a good person not because of the church, but in spite of it. They're cherry picking the parts of the church that they find good or that they agree with, and then simultaneously ignoring the parts that they disagree with or claiming that it's just culture. So those are my thoughts on this post. Let me know yours. I'm curious to see how other people view it. Again, I'm really not trying to call this person out in any way or be mean to them at all. So if you happen to know who posted this, please don't go be nasty to them. I just wanted to share my two cents. Huge thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. I appreciate you guys so much. An extra special thank you to Craig Call, Doug Davis, Mormonland, The Guiltiest Place on Earth, Noble Monster Comics, Richard Kaner, Tans, and the x -Mill Candle Company for supporting at the Demon Tier on my Patreon. If you guys would like to support the channel and the work that goes into it, there are links to do so in the description below, as well as links to all my other social media if you want to see more content. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! That's for sure, never have to close the door Been a long time, a year before